Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the ultimate PVE survival guide. And today I'm going to show you how to survive all the PVE elements in the game, which includes puppets, animals, and megs. Okay? How to deal with each and every one of them, and just a few small tips and tricks along the way as well. Okay? Now, I've been playing Scum for quite a while. I like having a lot of fun, which is the main purpose of playing a game. I do die a heck of a lot, but I do also know how to handle AI. When I say AI, I mean artificial intelligence in games. Um, games like Dark Souls or um, that new game, Elden Ring, that came out has got very advanced AI. Um, but even a game like that, there are patterns that you can work out with those AI, and that's the difference between good Dark Souls player and normal Dark Souls player, players. And in any game, especially in a survival game, AI have got set rules that they must follow. Okay, so they've got certain weaknesses and they've got certain strengths strengths and today i'm just going to show you how to deal with those weaknesses and strengths okay now when it comes to your starting build regarding how to combat ai um, at strength melee weapons is definitely a very very strong skill um because it lets you do combos it lets you hit faster all those kinds of things. And archery is a very strong skill against um, puppets, which I will show you now. Then regarding constitution, running is a great skill because you can run away from most puppets. So it increases your it increases your jog speed and your run speed by 15%. Okay. And it gives you a, a minus 30% consumption rate when you jog or run, okay? So you'll be able to run for much further when you want to get away from a big threat, and you'll be able to run 15% faster when you want to get away from a threat. Of course, dexterity helps with this as well, okay? If we go to dexterity, it says that it influences your movement speed, action speed, you know? And various other things. But the movement speed and the action speed is very, very important when it comes to dexterity. Then dexterity itself, the main thing that's going to help you here with PvE elements is stealth. First of all, um, when it comes to AI sight, the only thing that influences it is blockage. Like if you're behind a wall, a puppet can't see you. If you're behind a bush, a puppet can't see you. If you're inside a bush, a puppet can't see you. So sight is the main thing that you can't really influence. It's only the objects around you that can influence the AI sight, okay? Um, and then other than that, at nighttime, they tend to see you, um, you know, their sight range decreases a little bit at night, Okay. But that's the one thing you can't influence. The big thing that you can influence about AI is their hearing, okay? How quickly they can hear you. So when you are not in their cone of vision, okay, which is basically about 90 degrees right, 90 degrees left, and everything in front of them, um, then sound is your biggest strength against them because that determines how close you can get to them before they can detect you. Okay, um, that is not so important against animals. It's quite important against puppets, and it's extremely important against megs. Okay, which are most people's main problems when it comes to the PV element in Scum. And then at um, yeah, at intelligence, I'd say awareness is also your biggest strength to pinpoint the sounds that they make because they do make sounds to pinpoint where they are and um, whether it's a meg or a puppet or an animal and uh, of course if you're hunting animals awareness helps you to track the animal okay so it helps a lot with hunting animals but when it comes to your defense against pve um, it helps you to hear them um, quite far away Okay, now survival is of course an important skill because you get a compass, 
you know, um, the more survival you have or your comp, your, your passive compass gets advanced. And of course, it opens up crafting options for you that can help you quite a bit um, against puppets. So you can see we've only got, we've got no survival skill here. So the things that are going to help you against the puppet is even with no skill, you can still craft a stab proof vest. Okay, even if you can't find it, you can still craft it. The negative thing about this stab proof vest is that you need diaries to craft the stab proof vest. And I usually find that in bunkers. So that's quite a risk. But I mean, that's mostly where you're going to find the diaries is in bunkers. In offices as well, but I find I find them more in bunkers. And then, of course, you just need like one improvised rope, which you can make from rag strips, you know, or one tree bark rope, which you can make from five small sticks. And then, of course, you need two duct tape, okay? But this you can already make with no skill, which is going to help you with defense. And then the other thing that's going to help you is, of course, the bulletproof armor, which is a little bit easier because... On official loot settings, you won't take too long to find a thread. And of course, you can get a bow needle from a puppet. You can get bolts by looting workshops um, or cars. You can find scrap metal by looting cars. And then you can just kill three puppets um, and use their skin to get to the bulletproof, ve bulletproof armor, which in my opinion is much better than the stab-proof vest, okay? So if I'm going to craft something, I'm rather going to craft this. Because getting three puppets to my location, you know, to pull three puppets to me and kill them so that they all die at the same spot so that I can chop them up and use their skin to create this isn't so difficult. But I think getting this is a little bit more difficult, okay? That's just my personal opinion. So, of course, basic survival will help you, okay, to get to the bullet bulletproof vest, which is quite important. Now... When it comes to the basics, the, your most powerful tool against any puppet is basically your bow, okay? Um, your bow is much more powerful than anything else. Like you guys just saw with my build, I've got no archery skill, okay? But I've got advanced melee. But I can still show you the speed at which you can kill a puppet. So we're going to start with the, we're just going to go through the different puppets that you can find. And the first one on the list is, of course, our thin puppet. Okay. So if I spawn in a thin puppet, okay, then you will see with the bow, I can kill him with one shot. Okay. And then I can walk up to him. And I can take my arrow. Okay? That's as simple as it is. The, the bow is the fastest way to kill puppets overall. Okay? Now, when we take the club that you can craft right in the beginning, because to craft a club, all you basically need is right there where you start. You know, you can make a, you can make a stone knife and then, you know, make the small, the small stone axe with two rocks, you know, and then you can make the axe with the head, the, you know, the long wooden stick, and of course your improvised rope or your tree bark rope, okay? Then you can chop down a tree and, uh, and as soon as you've chopped down the tree, you can chop down the log into planks and then with the, the club only needs a plank and a cutting tool, okay? Any cutting tool will do. Of course, you've got an axe. You need an a, a stone axe to chop down the tree. So you'll have the stone axe at hand and you can make the club, which is very, very easy. And then the second melee weapon I have here is the wooden spear, which you can also craft right at the start with this stone, you know, with the stone knife and with one, lo one lo stick. But let's look at the differences now, okay? So... If I'm right, I'm just going to spawn in the same puppet now. And now let's look at the difference, okay? One, two, three, four, okay? And I kept my stamina um, between... I didn't really take my stamina below 90%, okay? One thing you must realize is the most... Most of the time, you will die to puppets or animals when you're out of stamina because 
you can't run because you're out of stamina you and you hit a lot slower because you're out of stamina. And the fact that you're hitting slower gives them an opportunity to hit you, stagger you, and then kill you. And then, of course, with the Meg, stamina will always have, also have an effect because if you can't run, it's going to be easier for them to shoot you. But the main thing with the Meg is as soon as it shoots you, it usually cripples you and also then you can't run and that's when a meg kills you okay but that was about five shots now let's look at the wooden spear that you can make but already you guys can see it took one shot with the 20 pound bow with no archery skill okay took five shots with the club now let's look at the spear okay so we're gonna come here with a spear one keep my stamina high two Keep our stamina high, three. Keep our stamina high, four. Okay? So four shots with a wooden spear. Five with a club, four with a spear. Roughly, okay? Just roughly. Now, that is quite simple. But now, when you start facing more dangerous enemies, so it took five with a club, and it took about four with a spear, okay? Okay? Now, when we start looking at more dangerous puppets, um, the muscular puppet is definitely the puppet that I fear most. And um, a lot of people fear the, you know, the, the armored puppet more. But I'm just going to show you guys here. When it comes to the armored puppet, the armored puppet or the muscular puppet is one of the puppets that hit the hardest. Okay, so when we spawn him in now, okay, then we're going to get his attention. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten shots with a spear, okay? Now it's definitely going, going to start taking longer. Now, if, if I spawn in a police puppet, the puppet that you get at the police station with a stab-proof vest, then it's going to take more shots because the first shot is going to break his, um, his stab-proof vest. So it will probably take 11 or 12 shots to kill him. And then when you go to the armored, you know, the, the armored military puppet, of course, it's going to take more shots. So how can we increase this time? But again, even with that puppet that I just showed you guys, again, we're going to look at the, at the, at the bow, okay? So, one, two, okay? So, immediately, you can see that the kill time, okay, decreases. And this is with the, with the weakest bow with no archery skill, okay? So, of course, the bow is your primary defensive tool, against any living PvE threat, a puppet or an animal. Your bow will always be your best tool against them, unless they get too close to you. If they get too close to you, then you must either switch to a melee weapon or you must use the fist option, okay? First option is you hit the middle mouse button and you can use your fist to get them away from you. So if this guy gets too close to me, okay? And I, and, I, and I haven't got time, I can hit him and hit the bow. Okay? And I just want to make sure that was uh, a headshot. Okay, so he's going to get too close to me. I'll punch him. Okay, he's not dead yet. Again, I can punch him and shoot him. Okay? So that's a good way with the bow to keep them at a distance. Okay? And then, of course, I can just go and pick my arrows up from both of them. Of course, you can always search a puppet to get your arrows back. Okay? It will open some, some of it. And very importantly, when you kill a puppet that has armor on it, there's a chance that he'll give you his vest, which already gives you some protection okay it's not going to last very long but at least it's giving you a little bit of protection and if you if you find a toolbox you can repair this vest up to 50 percent so you can get a stab proof vest from a puppet that wears a stab proof vest sometimes and then you can get a tactical vest from the military puppet that wears 
the stab proof vest and the helmet. So the tactical puppet wears, uh, or the military puppet wears a military helmet and a tactical vest. Now, you won't get it from every puppet, but sometimes if you keep searching them, you can find a helmet and you can find a tactical vest from them and you can, and you can repair both those items up to 50% with the toolbox, which will help you a ton in the long run, of course. Okay? Now, one thing I want to show you guys now is just the, the value of upgrades. Now, I did go through the damage stats in the Master Series, but... You know, let's just look at this first hand because it's got to do with PvE threats. So from a basic spear to an improvised metal spear, the only difference here is basically the fact that you need one improvised rope and one scrap metal, okay, which you can get from any car. And, you know, there's, there's, there's always cars around. There's always workshops around. Basically, the first car you search, you're going to get a, a metal scrap, which you can upgrade a bow uh, a spear with and then for the club all you need to upgrade a club is to get one nail okay now the, the scrap metal is a little bit is much faster to find than the nail but again both upgrades don't take that much time but what differences do these two upgrades do you know make in your arsenal so i'm going to take the club with nails and then I'm going to take the me the metal spear, which is quite easy to craft. So we saw that the first puppet was quite tough. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just spawn in the skinny one. Okay. And let's see how long this takes. Okay. So that's three shots. Let's take the the the, the metal spear. Okay, that's three shots. And now let's take the the muscular one. That was a lot tougher. Okay, that's six shots instead of whatever it was. Okay, I think it was about ten. Those are, that's six shots. And now let's look at the club with nails. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So it makes a huge difference, guys. It makes a huge difference. It decreases the kill time by about 40%. Okay? One item. One item to, you know, to upgrade the basic club or the basic spear makes a huge difference. Um, getting the wire for the 35-pound bow makes quite a, bit, quite a big difference, okay? Um, you need the wire or the rope, but we usually go for the wire because we can break a battery with a club and get wire from it. So the bow makes quite a big difference. And then, of course, the... The arrows, the arrows are the biggest difference in damage, okay? So you can increase the killing time by that as well, okay? So we've covered now how to how to kill them, okay? And of course, if you're fighting a puppet, just hit him, move back, hit him, move back. If you don't want to move back, if you're stuck in a corner, then you can hit him, move to the side, okay? Hit him, move to the side, because he has to do an animation to turn around, guys. That's an extra animation that he has to do to turn around, okay? And you can just you can just play ring a ring a rosy with him. So you can either move back or you can just jog around him because he has to stop and hit and uh, hit you or turn and hit at you, okay? Now, the biggest thing about this is how do the all uh, how how can I defend myself against these puppets? Okay? So we're gonna look at what damage the first puppet can do to you. So we're going to go to the skinny one, and I'm just going to let him hit me normally. I want to wait till he does a chest one. Okay, there's chest. Okay. So he hit me in the chest twice, and he hit me on the arm once. Okay. The two shots on the chest... Um, was about four damage each. 
okay, without any armor on. About four, about four damage, okay? And then the one on the on the arm was about two damage. Of course, you get damage reduction when something hits you in the arm or the leg. Chest, you know, um, is a lot of damage. Head is even more damage. So your weakest point is your head and your neck, okay? Your head and your neck are your weakest points. Head and, and neck area is your weakest points, okay? And then your chest will be your second weakest point, and then the damage reduction just increases. Less damage on the upper arm, even less damage on the lower arm, more damage on the upper leg, less damage on the lower leg, you know, and so it goes. So that was, yeah, roughly about four damage per shot. Now we can just do this. Without armor on, we can just hold in the right mouse button and block. Okay, let's see what difference this does. <gasps> Okay, you guys can see there on my health, that was about one, that was about three, one and a half, one and a half damage that he did to me, okay? So just the mere fact that I'm blocking is decreasing the damage by 50% or more, okay? But let's, let's just give it a flat rate of 50%, okay? And now what we can do is we can put the stab proof vest on us, okay? And now we can combine the two. So we've got 80 health. We've got 80 health. Okay, here we go. So again, just about two damage. We can last very, very long against a puppet like that. Okay. But again, the thin puppet doesn't do a lot of damage. So the armor is already protecting us. Okay. And if we go here, you can see. The improvised stab proof, vest, stab proof vest goes down very, very fast, okay? It takes a lot of damage very quickly. So that's why you would try and get a stab proof vest from the puppets or from the police station because they last a lot longer, okay? So if we stand here and it, we let, let him hit us, <laughs> 73 health, guys, 73 health. Okay, 66, 66 damage, okay, we took, a, we took a heck of a lot more shots there, okay, now let's go look at uh, the bulletproof vest, okay, the, the one that I prefer, let's look at the bulletproof vest, I'm not gonna block now, see, Look at the second shot. If you guys watch the video back, you will see that the first shot did damage to me, and it was because it was on my other arm. But the shot after that didn't, okay? The shot after that didn't, didn't make a difference because it was on the chest. And this, the bulletproof vest, takes a lot less damage you know, from the durability and it's the, so whether you're using this or whether you're using the bulletproof vest, there's not a massive difference. It's still going to give you this roughly the same amount of protection. Okay, but let's see, let's see how much damage this takes when you get hit in the chest. Two, two. Now I'm going to block. Nothing. Nothing. One, it's the bleeding, guys. It's the bleeding that's, it's the bleeding that's that's killing me now. Okay, definitely the bleeding marker. So let's just get a, f um, let's just get Phoenix tears here. Um, spawn item. Okay, let's just let's just inject ourselves quickly to stop the bleeding. Or we could have used a rag strips, guys. <laughs> I'm just trying to do this a little bit faster. Okay. So look at all those bleeding markers. And it's fine. Okay. So now I'm going to rest a little bit. 
and then show you guys the difference in puppet damage. Okay, so the the thin one looks like it does an average of about four damage. Okay, so for that puppet to kill you, I'd actually give it three damage because bleeding, you know, and the the bleeding also damaged us over time. But let's 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 say four. Okay, to be generous, let's say four. So four goes into 125 times. That puppet has to hit you 25 times to kill you. If you put up, if you block with your weapon, he's probably going to have to hit you 50 times or more. If you block with your weapon and you've got armor on you, he's probably going to have to hit you like 200, 200 times to kill you. Okay? So there's a lot of combinations. It's the blocking of the weapon plus the armor that you have on you that safeguards you, okay? Um, and that can help you to get your stamina back. So I'm just going to let this guy heal quickly, and then we're going to go through the other damage numbers. Okay, guys, now let's discuss how do you stay away from getting any damage, okay? Now, the first thing is puppets have got different speeds, okay, which are very, very important. But before we handle the speed, how do we how do we get away from them? Okay, so the first way you can get away from them is basically jumping over items. Okay, so this puppet is the fastest puppet in the game. Okay, so you can clearly see even if we run, he can catch us. Okay, he can catch us. Okay, but if we jump over something. It gets him hurt. Okay, sometimes it blocks him, sometimes it doesn't block him. Okay, that's option number one. And every time he jumps over something, whether it's a rock or a fence or anything, it's going to hurt him. So he will die on his own over time okay but this will of course give me time to hit him hit him with a bow or something like that the second way is to um use a door okay but when you go through a door you want to open the door that way so the other way is to go through a window okay so you can stop him from hitting you through a window okay even if you inside house you can always go out of a window Okay, and then you can just use a door. Okay, that's going to stop him from killing you as well. Okay, the big thing is when it comes to the thin puppet, any weight that you have on you, normally we're going to run around with a gun and a lot of clothing and a lot of items, you know, hiking backpack, and that is going to slow us down. Okay. So to give you a small example here, our max run speed without any weight on us is 29.7 kilometers per hour, but we're losing more than two kilometers per hour there. If we just take off this vest, that's nine kilograms, we gain another kilometer, okay, that we can run with. So let's just open this gate for this poor fellow. Okay, he's stuck in the... Where is he? He's here at the back. Okay, so let's just get his attention here. Yeah? Let's run through here. Yeah? As you can see, there's no real way of losing this guy, except if you run through something, you know, go through a window or something, or you let him hurt himself. Okay, so that's that's a clear way. If you've got rocks around you, if you with if you're in the forest, then rocks can let you get rid of the thin ones. Okay, because it's basically the thin ones that gives you a problem. So let's look at the muscular one. Okay, so here's the muscular one. Okay, so clearly we can see the muscular one isn't a problem. 
okay? Muscular one isn't a problem at all. So your main threat is the thin ones. If you are going to talk, if there's a, if you're going to target puppets, always target the thin ones because they are the ones that will almost never lose sight of you. And of course, if you've got a ton of weight on you, then some pu puppets might be able to catch you, okay? But when I'm in a forest and I'm in a dangerous situation, dangerous situation I'm always going to look for bushes, okay? Bushes are my best weapon against a puppet. And the reason I say that is if I, if I was dumb and I didn't... Yeah, I didn't craft anything to defend myself with. So here I am with this guy. I'm in a dangerous situation. I don't really want to deal with him. Okay. As soon as he, as soon as he loses sight of me, yeah, he doesn't know where I am. Unless I make a sound. And then again, I can lose him again. Again, guys, sight. Sight is very important. Okay, sight with 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 puppets is very very important. And the only difference between the bulletproof and the tactical is that the bulletproof vest protects you um, a lot more. But if we go to the muscular, remember the thin puppet only did like three damage. If we go to the muscle puppet, it's how much damage he does. Okay, that was one shot. Two shots. It's about 9 to 10 damage, guys. I've got 79. It's about 9 damage. Okay, so it's more than double. More than double, okay? And if I defend myself now... I just have to stand still. Three. Three. Okay, he hit. He went through my defenses there. Two, three. Okay. You can clearly see it decreases the damage that it does to me. Okay, so there was a 15 HP without armor, 15 HP, 4 HP, 12 HP, 3 HP, 3 HP. Okay, of course, the bleeding markers adds to the damage as well. But when you block, again, it's giving you about 60, I'd say about 60% protection. Okay, then of course, if you combine the armor with that, like if I have to spawn in a tactical vest now. No, item. If I have to spawn in a tactical vest now, although I'm dying. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> so now let's see. With the tactical vest on, okay, and the fact that I can block. <gasps> Okay. So, I hope you guys see the difference between blocking and having armor on. Again, the armor is not going to protect you if he hits you on the arms or the head, except if you have a helmet on, which we didn't have on. The helmet is going to reduce the damage again by about 
okay? So armor is extremely important, and if I have to summarize this section, focus the thin puppets, run away, use cover, jump through windows, use doors, okay? Block with your weapon, and, okay, bulletproof vest, Definitely the one that you want to aim for, but the stab proof vest definitely has an effect as well. The only problem is you need to have the max amount of protection that you can. The max amount of protection that you can have is the arm guard, which you can find in game, which you guys usually don't use, but you can use the arm guard, you can use the vest, and you can use the helmet to give yourself maximum protection. I think the devs might add more protection in the future, but those... Are the main key points now let's go look at a few little you know a few little animals that you guys might struggle with in the forest oh right, you guys now look let's look at a few animals that you guys fear the biggest animals that i think you fear at the moment is the sharks very very easy to stay away from sharks don't swim in the don't swim in the light blue water okay swim in the if you if you Aren't, if you don't have more than 17 kilograms of weight on you, then you can swim in the dark blue water. Just don't swim in the light blue water, okay? Because a shark will attack you. If the shark does attack you, there's a mini game where you spam your F key and you let the circle, you must try and control the circle so that it st stays in the green, okay? As soon as a shark attacks you, there will be a mini game. If you spam the F, you will see that your circle becomes bigger and you don't want to spam it forever. You just want to click the F until it goes into the green section in the middle of that circle. Keep it in the green section so that it releases you as fast as possible. And you guys can test this for yourself. If you wear a bulletproof vest, okay, you can't really wear more than a bulletproof vest really because you'll drown, okay, because you will be too heavy. But with, just with a bulletproof vest, if a shark attacks you, it won't do any damage to you because he first has to break your armor before he does any damage to you, okay? Now, what I've chosen here is a stone spear because when you start in the forest, you can't really make the um, metal spear because you need scrap metal. But you can make the stone spear because you can get all these resources from the forest. So the first enemy that we are going to deal with today is going to be the one that you all love so much. It's the wolf, okay? So we're going to spawn in the wolf. Okay, and here's the wolf. Now, first thing about the wolf is, if he can attack me. Here we go. He's got an animation. He's got an animation, guys. And you can spam him. You can spam him if you want. But you can stay away from him as well. Or you can block him. Just, or you can just stun lock him, guys. You can just stun lock him. Uh, of course, the big thing about him is that he can damage you, okay? With um, he can damage you with C3, with C4 bleeding markers. And again, when you heal yourself, always focus your biggest, your biggest bleeding marker because bleeding is gonna kill you, okay? Not really the injuries. The bleeding from C4, C3, and C2 is going to kill you. And that's why your medical skill is quite important. Because the medical skill lets you perform. Lets you bandage yourself a lot faster. Okay? So, as you could see, we could take a heck of a lot of shots. We can sidestep him. Okay? 
But the best weapon for me against the wolf is right here. Because the spear is a bit slow, I'd rather use a club. Okay? So let's look at that quickly. Okay, guys. So if your weapon is fast enough, you can, you can spam lock a wolf with a spear. Okay? But when you want to spam lock a, an animal, then... Um, the club is definitely better. So I'm first going to get his attention that we don't surprise attack him. Okay. Look there, my stamina, my stamina is low. My stamina was at zero. If my stamina is at zero with the spear, he's going to kill me, guys. He will kill me. Okay? And let me show that to you. Okay? So we're going to spawn in a spear. Let's take the stone spear again. Okay? Take the, take the stone spear. Let's spawn in another wolf. Okay? So now we've got the spear. Let's see if we can spam the spear. Okay, we can still spam him, but because the spear attacks slower than a fast weapon, we won't be able to do it fast enough. Okay, he's still going to get attacks on us. So that makes two wolves extremely complicated. Okay, extremely compli complicated. But when it comes to a good weapon, let's say the medieval sword that we can get at the castle very easily, or let's say the metal sword, the metal sword that we can craft. Okay, so let's just see a metal sword. Is this the one we can craft? Yeah. So this is the one that we can craft, and it's quite fast. Okay. Now, yeah, I can't even run away. So, but let's just look at the difference. How quickly can we get rid of a wolf like this? Okay. That wolf was absolutely chicken. You see? Much, much quicker. We didn't even run out of stamina. And he ran away. Okay? And now we've got a bunch of angry wolves around us. But now let's go look at a bear. Even though we're dying. Okay, let's just get some painkillers here. Painkillers. Okay, let's take one. Two. Three. And let's say four. Okay, so there's our painkillers. And let's just imagine, let's just imagine we had enough, um, we had enough rags and stuff to heal us. Now with our low health, with our low health, what do we do with a bear? Well, a bear is very simple. Much simpler than a wolf, basically, but we can go... Let's get a bear in here. Okay. Once you find a bear, then a tree, a tree is your best friend. Okay? So we're just gonna get his attention here. Hello, bear. Can you attack me, please? Thank you very much. So as soon as you've got a tree, guys, the tree helps you. The tree helps you with dodging as well. Okay, but you can just put yourself behind the tree. And then at some point, he's going to get bored. Okay, Yogi Bear gets very, very bored. He's heavy. He gets tired very, very quickly. And it, it, just, it just gets bored really, really quickly. Okay? So, Yogi Bear, not really a challenge. 
okay? Now, Yogi Bear without a tree. <laughs> Yogi Bear without a tree is another problem. Because Yogi Bear's animations are quite slow. We can fight him a bit, yeah? Again, he gets bored. Again, he gets bored. Okay? You don't even have to have a tree. He still gets bored. Go, Yogi! <laughs> okay? But yeah, guys, a bear is definitely not something to fear because he does get bored quite quickly. You just have to confuse. Okay, sometimes he's gonna get you. If you play with him too long, he's gonna get you. Okay, but he can even ru run away because he's scared. So, Yogi Bear gets bored very quickly, wolves can get spam blocked. At the end of the day, guys, two wolves are very, very difficult, okay? Two wolves are very, very, very difficult. That's the only time when you should run. Because if you see two wolves, you can still lose them, okay? At the end of the day. But let's see with advanced tactics if we can handle two wolves, which you do get in the game. Okay, so here we've got two wolves. Okay. <laughs> Clearly, it's a lot more complicated than that. Okay, but with full health and armor and a much more potent weapon, okay, you can kill them. Like, if you want to kill a wolf, just hit him with, a, with an arrow. As, he, as he's coming for you, okay? Two or three shots in the head, and he'll run away. And then you can handle his friend with a melee weapon if you want to. But at the end of the day, try and get the first wolf with as many arrows as you can. And if you don't have a bow, you know, if you don't have a bow, just run. You will hear them from a distance. They have got a warning, okay? So then you can just run. Now let's go look at the last thing on the list, which is Megs. And this is where the stealth is going to kick in. Oh, right, guys, here we are. I just, I just chose a, a random, you know, a random bunker. So the first thing that's going to protect you against the meg is, of course, sight. Okay. And I don't see a lot of bushes here, but I mean, I can use everything to protect me from his vision. His vision is the main danger. Okay. So we're going to see, he can't, he's got, now we, of course, most of us wants to get into the bunker or most of us want to hide. So you can lean to look at him without him seeing you. Okay, you can look like, you lean like this. Okay. And then he won't see you. But you can use a bush as well. You can definitely use a bush as well. Okay. Or you can do this. So he saw you. Now you want to see if he's coming to you. He's coming to you. Okay, so you can either sneak past him or you can just take him to where you want to take him. Use the environment so that he tries and goes and gets you. And now we're we're in the bunker. Okay, so that's one good way to stay away from a mink. Okay, you don't always have to hide. You can use the environment to your advantage by leaning. Okay, we can lean now to see where he's going to. You see? Now we can look at him by leaning and he's not going to see us. Because if we don't lean, he can't see us. If we lean, he can see us. Okay, that's the best way to know. Is, is he going to see me? No, he won't see me if I don't lean. He will only see me if I do lean. Okay? And now we can just keep an eye on him like this. If you're close to the wall, then of course it's much better so that he doesn't see you. Okay, but this is a good example. We're going to wait for him to turn around now. And there, he doesn't see us. We can clearly see him, but he can't see us. Okay? So vision is a very, very, very powerful tool. And again, it looks like his root is too small. So we're going to do this. We're going to attract him one way. Okay? And then we're just going to go another way. 
so we can literally play around with him. The biggest thing about a mate is his vision. So he can't see through a bush, but he can see over a bush. You have to take his height into consideration. So that's why you guys will see me hide inside a bush usually when they are close. If they are not close, I'm going to hide behind the bush so that I've got more vision around me. Okay? And then the other great thing about stealth is that you can do this. Okay, so I was jogging there, guys. I wasn't even walking. I was jogging, okay? So if you've got your gear weight on you, you can jog very, very close to him, and he will almost never turn around when you run for a bunker door, okay? With no stealth skill, if you've got your usual gear on you, with no stealth skill, he's going to hear you like the timing, the gap that you have, let's say he's walking away from the bunker door and you want to sprint at the bunker door. The, the time that you have to give him to get away from the door so that he won't hear you is almost at max range with no stealth, okay? So most of the time with no stealth, you're going to run, he's going to hear you and he's going to shoot at you. With basic stealth, it will give you a little bit more leeway. And then with, um, with medium stealth, you will have your 50%, you know, 50% of his route will be okay. I just want to see if there's any bunk here that we can test out quickly. Not really. And just one small little tip, when you open your parachute, and you don't want to die, press W immediately. W slows you down. Like I have taught you guys that if you hold in W, you gain, you know, you you will you will go further when you open your parachute. So if you hold in W and open your parachute, it will give you momentum, but it will, won't break your speed a lot. So I don't mean W. When you open your parachute and it feels to you like you're going forward too fast, hit the S key. Okay, hit the backwards key. It will slow you down so that you don't break your legs. Okay. Now, what bunker can I show you a good example of stealth? Maybe it's that one. Okay, yeah. That's the perfect one to show you about stealth. So yeah, with stealth, okay, <laughs> with stealth, can, I think I'm a bit high, but let's see, okay, <laughs> so this is the bush mechanic, guys, although you guys can see me, although, because the game identifies me as being in a bush, he can't see me, okay, and now I can literally walk behind him. Okay, although I have to know which way he's going to turn. I have to know which way he's going to turn. And now I can just stay behind him. If I know which way he's going to turn, I can stay behind him with advanced stealth. I hope he's going to turn left. No, he's not. <laughs> No, he's not. Okay, so knowing which way he's going to turn is very, very important. But that is the value of advanced stealth. So that you can run whenever you want. You've got a lot more time to run. 
where usually if you don't have stealth, he's going to hear you from, with no stealth guys, he's going to hear you from about 20 meters away. With basic stealth, he's going to hear you, you know, he's going to hear you like 15 meters away, you know, and at no stealth, he won't even hear you if you're right behind him, okay? So with gear on, you can just sprint for the bunker door, okay? He's not going to hear you. And of course, it has a major advantage um, versus players as well, okay? Um, and yeah, and then of course, the awareness, you know, the awareness helps you echo a lot with... Um, Cancel, you know. The awareness helps you a heck of a lot with understanding where they are, which you don't really need in third person. But in first person, you know, it will definitely help you. Okay, so listen to what I can hear. You hear the, the wind, the birds, everything. We can roughly hear where he is. Now listen to this. Okay. Everything gets cut away. And that is applicable for for players and puppets too. Okay? Listen to the difference. I can just hear the puppets and the me. I can't hear anything else. Now without without awareness and focus mode. I can hear them, but I can't really focus on what direction they're coming from or where they are. Now I know there's a puppet there. Now I know there's a puppet there. Okay? That helps a heck of a lot with players as well, guys. So guys. I think I've covered it. If you've got any other questions that you're wondering about that I maybe forgot about or didn't think about, please leave it in the comments down below. Um, but I hope it helped you. If this video did help you, just do me a favor and click that like button. Okay. And yes, if you want to see and learn everything there is to see and learn about Scum, then do yourself a favor and click the subscribe button and then the bell button to be notified of future videos. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And yeah. See you guys later. Cheers.